All right, here we go. Let's take a look at the last section in the chapter here. We're going to talk about data distribution. So what is that all about? Well, I got an example right here. Sometimes we like to know how the data is just spread out. So this is Fortnite users uh, from August of 2017 to May of 2020 in millions. So check it out. How is the data distributed over time? You can see that over time what's happening. We're getting a ton of players, man. Like it is just taking off. We went from 1 million in August of 2017 to 350 million in May. That's pretty amazing. Probably because of those cool skins, some cool dances. So we're going to look at how is the data distributed maybe over time um, or maybe just some other ways we're going to look at and see how, how the data falls. So let's take a look at an example here. I'm interested in how the distribution of M&Ms, like I love orange M&Ms. So I want to know, well, how many, how do they spread those out? Are there a lot of oranges or browns or reds or blues or whatever it is? So I buy everyone in class snack packs. I give them all snack packs, and I'm really interested in what percent of them are orange, and I kind of highlighted that here. How many orange M&Ms should I get in a big old party bucket? I'm not sure if you've seen the party bucket. It's massive. It's awesome. So if I give, uh, if I give every student Bob right here, opens up his snack pack, and eight out of his 40. So that's gonna be important right here. So this is kind of like an experimental probability. If we got eight out of 40, that doesn't mean everybody, it doesn't mean Sally got eight out of 40 or you got eight out of 40, it just means Bob did. So if we only use Bob's snack pack, his eight out of 40, so this would be his snack pack, uh, this would be his orange, ah, over what all the total M&Ms in here. So we're gonna do a couple proportions and as long as you're consistent, so I've got orange M&Ms on top, his total M&Ms on bottom. If I do that, then it's cool to go ahead and say, well, in a party bucket, I know I'm going to get 850 M&Ms. That's a lot of M&Ms. Boom, party bucket. So it goes on bottom. Do I know how many of those are going to be orange? Well, if we use Bob's ratio, then I'm going to get a nice approximation just from Bob's ratio here. So we're going to set up like this. As long as orange is on top, total's on bottom, we are totally cool. <laughs> So let's solve this real quick. Remember, we're going to cross multiply. So 8 times 850 is 6,800. So I'm going to multiply those. And then I'm going to say 40 times x over here is 40x. And now this is a little one-step equation I can solve here. I'm just going to do what? Divide both sides by 40. Divide by 40. And now this, again, this is only using Bob's ratio. But according to Bob's snack pack, if that is the true uh, ratio of oranges, you should get 170 orange M&Ms in your party bucket. Now, what's the bummer about this? Well, if Sally got 10 out of 40, we're going to get a different number. So it's going to be totally different depending on um, the person's snack pack you use. So we're going to talk about ways we can get good samples for the whole party bucket. Awesome. How about this? Kind of change it up from M&Ms a little bit. Uh, what if I have an internet company, they survey 500 people and found that 42% of the people they surveyed like their company, like their service. How many would you expect for this many? So what are we going to do here? Really, this is just a fancy way of saying, and I highlight this? Yes. How many are satisf satisfied with their service? So, so you can find 42% of 500. That's great. But really, I'm interested in the 42% of everybody. So they found the number, they made it a percent, and now they want to kind of extend that to all their customers, not just their sample. So really I'm asking, hey, what is, and I like to write this out, what is 42% of 8,400, all their customers, boom. And then when I do that, I can plug it into the formula. So I can say, oh, I know the formula. The formula for these are going to be is over of, it's a terrible looking is, is over of equals percent over 100. And then once you have the formula, straight up plug and chug. Just go for it, man. So what are we going to We know, we don't know the is. We want to know what is. So I'm looking for the is. So that's going to be my variable. There's x. I know my of, 8,400. Boom. And I'm going to say 42%. Percent always goes over 100. And now I've got a little equation to solve. Excellent. Let's just solve this bad boy so we're cool. So I'm going to say, I'll do this one in my head, 100 times x, 100x. I like that one. How about 8,400 times 4,200? I actually cheated. I was going to pretend like I was doing middle math, but I actually wrote it down beforehand. Uh, 352,800. That's a lot. But we're going to go ahead and divide that by 100. Whoops. Divide by this side by 100. Whoops. 
divide this side by 100. What happens here, I get x equals, and this one I can do in my head because I know the zeros just cancel. Those are going to cancel those. So this will be 3,528. What are these customers? So make sure you label this. Oh, my handwriting is struggling today. Customers. Awesome. So you could have found the sample, but really we're just interested in our population, the 42% of that. Fantastic. So there's the mathy part of it. Now we're going to describe data and kind of talk about data, which is great. Let's go ahead and say, here's my class right here. So I went ahead. This has to do with my orange M&Ms again. So they went ahead and see how Bob may got the 20, Bill got the 18, Beth got, they all got different amount of orange in their little snack pack. So let's make a, let's make a little dot plot here. So go ahead and you can just use circles. You don't have to make M&Ms on your notes, but put, uh, put a dot or an X or something at 20 for Bob. Bill's going to be over here at 18. So I'm going to do 18. Beth is going to be at 21. Barry's at 20. So you can work ahead of me if you want here. Brooke, 19. Try to space them nice and evenly um, so that it shows what's going on. I know it's not going to be perfect, but we want them nice and spaced when you go vertically. Uh, so we're going to compare the heights of these different things. Brooke, we got another 21. Bethany, a lot of Bs in Mr. Brust class. B for breast, I guess. Uh, 23 here. 18, 19, oh, there we go, 19's winning, and then a 17. Excellent, I think I got everybody there. So, why is this nice? The table, I can't really tell much of anything going on. And if you need to pause, go ahead and pause to finish your graph. But I can't see what's really going on here, but when I graph it, what do you, can you tell quickly? Oh yeah, it looks like most people had 19, or fell right around 19. One person had a lot of oranges, who is that? Billy Bob rocks some oranges, but really most people are between 18 and 20. So it's a quick way to see how my data is distributed. So that's super cool. How about Mr. Martin's class? So I went ahead and I think I graphed Mr. Martin's class for you. Totally different results. Uh, he's got Mark, Mary, he's got a lot of M's for Martin, I guess. So what happened to his? Well, he's got this grouping down here, doesn't he? And then he's got another grouping up here. So either they got a lot or maybe a little. Very different than Mr. Bruss. Let's see if we can compare them side by side. So when you look at Mr. Brust, his grouping's right here, whoops, and this guy is all over the board like that. We have two distinct groupings. So when you have data, it can have different shapes. So what we say, they're very different classes here. Mr. Martin had nobody in the 19s and 20s. There's a gap between 19 and 20, where that's where Mr. Brust, all, almost all his data fell in 19 and 20. He had a lot of lowers, a couple uppers, very, very different than Mr. Brust. So very different distributions here. So we need a way to to categorize these or to talk about types of distribution. So let's label these. I think I drew them for you, which is nice. You're welcome. Uh, let's go ahead and say, what's this first graph here? We describe this as skewed right. So you see how it kind of starts big and then tapers off here? We say where it gets smaller, that's where we're skewed to. So it's skewed to the right. So excellent. So we're going to have to identify uh, different data distributions. If it's symmetrical like this, up and down, nice, pretty nice. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's pretty good. Uh, like a normal bell-shaped curve. We call that a normal distribution. What do you think this bad boy is? Left. Yep, see how the small parts to the left, the big parts to the right? We say that's skewed left. Um, excellent. Those are the main three. So some other ones can happen here. These are about the same. They Don't they all look about the same here? It's pretty boxy. I know it's not perfect, but they're roughly all the same. We call that uniform. They all have the same distribution, equally likely or pretty equally likely. And then this looks like Mr. Martin right here. Kind of weird shape, not that Mr. Martin is weird shape, but uh, that his class distribution, not I shouldn't say weird, it's bimodal. We have two bumps here. We have a, a small group and a big group. So we have bimodal. So these are the five types of distributions you got to recognize. Excellent. Let's go ahead and practice that. So I switched it up from, you know, bar graphs to uh, little dot plots here, um, however you want to look at it. See if you can fill these in, pause these, try these real quick, see how you do. Okay, so I ended up getting the first one, I would say that's skewed left, the small parts to the left. This one looks pretty normal. I mean, it's not 100% perfect, but overall, it's got this nice, normal mound-shaped, bell-shaped curve to it, so I would say that's pretty normal. And then the last one is bimodal. We've got, those, we've got some groupings, definitely a grouping down here, definitely a grouping up here, definitely bimodal. 
Excellent. So that's it, really. How does that relate back to our Fortnite graph? Well, now that we have the vocab for this, how would you describe Fortnite over those uh, from 2017 to 2020? It's definitely skewed left. And what does that mean? So that's great that you said skewed left, but you have to go a little bit farther. Well, it means there weren't many players in the beginning, and then it, it was growing and growing and growing. So, okay, so you can see Fortnite was going up and up and up. Is it going to continue to go up? Well, we don't have the most current data here. I don't know in 2021, 22, 23, blah, blah, blah. Maybe it went back down. You know, seasons got kind of lame there for a little bit. Maybe it turned more into normal. Maybe it keeps going up. So um, it could change. But what we have here shows from this time period, definitely skewed left. All right. Good luck on the mastery check and the practice. Peace out.